was one of America's most iconic entertainers and civil rights activists, Harry Belafonte dying today. He was one of the first black performers to gain wide success as an actor and to sell a million records as a singer. He died of heart failure at the age of 96, leaving behind quite the legacy. Harry Belafonte became the first black winner of an Emmy Award in TV, but he also became an unrelenting civil rights activist who used his celebrity to help others. I mean, Eleanor Roosevelt just walked into my life and uh, she turned it around. Dr. King called me on the phone one day. Malcolm X knocked at the door one day. Nelson Mandela, he and I had an exchange of letters while he was in prison. And just these things kept emerging and each time I saw opportunity to become involved in what their struggle and our struggle was about and felt I'd make as big a difference as I could. Michael Schneerson co-authored with Harry Belafonte the book My Song, a memoir of art, race in defiance, the definitive autobiography of Mr. Belafonte. He joins us now. Michael, good to have you with us. Uh, first of all, how unique yeah. was he as an entertainer and as a person? Well, he could have stopped right there. I mean, uh, as a biographer, I thought it was amazing to have a subject who was really two subjects. He, you know, he he became the world's most popular entertainer by the mid '50s, having started off um, in dire poverty, um, never thinking he would go beyond a few auditions as an actor. Um, but he did that, and then he had the wisdom and 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 the inspiration to put aside not only the the singing uh that, that had earned him such a reputation but acting he was a serious actor um and to uh instead take up with dr king dr king who um uh, as harry mentioned to us a few minutes ago the two of them met in a basement of a harlem church and um essentially uh harry was just won over by king and spent the rest of his life working with him and it has to be said you know underwriting a lot of the costs of, of of social activism i mean those those names that he mentioned you know one reason they were so um enamored of harry and and grateful for him was that he would put in serious money and and help the movement lurch on to the next step yeah i know that he did the same thing with regards to nelson mandela and the anti-apartheid movement um you know i'm curious as you worked on his autobiography did he ever talk about putting so much fame and at that time fortune on the line i mean because he literally put the civil rights struggle on his back along with other entertainers but i don't think this younger generation understands he gave he was prepared to give up everything for the movement yes. i wonder if there are people now in the entertainment industry that would, would sacrifice that much gosh i you know it, it seems a very foreign idea now doesn't it um uh, but I can just tell you, having spent uh, almost three years with him, um, that uh, that compassion was absolute and heartfelt. Um, and indeed, um, it, you know, when I spent time with him, it was in his in his mid 80s. He was convening meetings almost every day when I was over there getting stories out of him. He would be, you know, meeting with Danny Glover and Pete Seeger and other people like that to to organize uh, whatever the next protest might be. Um, uh, it, it's an ast astounding um, character, uh, astounding um, astounding man who, who could do all these things and still just be one person. <laughs> I was at the old Lincoln Theater and I was new in Washington at the time. It was 1985 and I was sitting behind Lena Horne and I whispered to my wife, uh -huh. I said, that's Lena Horne. And she had that distinct voice, too, where she said, yes, honey. And then he said in his voice, yes, it is. And I turned around, <laughs> and they were such giants uh, at the time. You know, you talk about nothing to say, absolutely nothing to say. But I want to get to this point. At a time when some entertainers were thinking about retiring, he calls on Kenny Rogers. And Michael Jackson gets Quincy he Jones, did. people like Bruce Springsteen, Bob Dylan in a room to record... We are the world. This is a guy that had that much clout. Yeah, he, he really did. And and actually, he had the modesty to not inflict himself on that group of people. <laughs> Michael Jackson was the one that everyone sort of catered to anyway. But, <clears throat> you know, Michael was more than happy to be the sort of guide to this, this amazing um, recording. Um, but Harry was there uh, once again, underwriting it, making it happen. I'm curious, was he a civil rights legend who became an actor or an actor who became a civil rights legend? 
Well, he would. He has this thing where he flips those two things, and he says uh, that he was an activist who became an artist. I think the facts are that he he began as an artist because he he really started as an actor. Um, that didn't work too well, so he went to being a jazz crooner. He got annoyed with that role. He felt it was silly talking about moons in June, as he put it. So he then got on to a whole new kind of folk music, which was really socially active. Um, it, it was it was driving social activist uh, 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 groups, and um, and then uh, he literally um, decided that that was a, a segue into working for Dr. King. So. Um, you know, an artist, activist, uh, really in the end, he embodied them both. I'm curious, before I let you go, what did he think about the Banana Boat song? Um, I was concerned when he passed that that would be the one thing that everybody would talk about. They'd say, oh, the, he did that song. Um, but he did so well, much you know, more. There's a kind of, um, there is a, first of all, I think he, <clears throat> he was not at all bothered by sort of having that uh, typecast him, if you will. Um, uh, but I also think there's a more poignant aspect to it. Uh, Larry's father, um, Harry's father, uh, uh, worked on a banana boat um, much of his life and was a very um, troubled, angry guy who beat um, Harry uh, considerably. And, and I mean, try like forcing your son to get into a bathtub of boiling water. Um, oh. I mean, there's astounding stories. And so I see Harry's singing of this as a kind of not a tribute to his father, but um, just a sense of, of where he came from. Michael Schneerson, who co-authored the definitive autobiography of Harry Belafonte, the iconic legend. Uh, Michael, thanks for being with us. Sure, thank you. Pleasure.